We've got a lot more information about Cassandra and Eivor and their activities in the Isle of Skye, including map locations, some new Isu text, new weapons, and the invention of whiskey. So lots of cool stuff to chat about and speculate on here, thanks to Pedder, who's found all of this stuff in the game files. So spoiler alert inbound, folks, and let's head to Scotland. So first of all, as far as a quick recap goes on the whole Cassandra and Eivor front, it seems like Edith, a seer from the Isle of Skye in Scotland, visits Ravensthorpe and informs Eivor about terrible nightmares that the locals are actually having. They can't sleep and they're going absolutely mad and the nightmares seem to be all connected because everyone is seeing the same image of an eagle flying over Ravensthorpe. Valka also goes on to warn Eivor that she thinks that Ranby is actually the cause of all of these nightmares and to be honest with you, we have no idea why she states that. I'm quite bamboozled here so your thoughts on this one are very much welcome down below. Anyway, Eivor then arrives on the island of Skye, meets Cassandra and they both end up fighting off these Greek cultists who seem to be hunting Cassandra in particular as well as fighting off all of these corrupted NPCs who seem to be the people who have actually been driven mad by these nightmares. In fact, Eivor actually goes on to say that they have been driven to this madness by these nightmares and it's complete nonsense but we need to watch out for them and in actual fact it's better if we just take them out so they don't cause us any problems going forward. So it looks like these cultists and these mad NPCs are going to be our enemies on the island. Pedder has also found a dialogue entry here from one of the Greek cultists which actually says that the blood of your god in your veins is not meant to walk these lands, mercenary, which is a direct statement towards Cassandra. So there is a lot going on here for sure, which does sound great. But apart from these nightmares, why is Eivor, Cassandra and half of Greece on the west coast of Scotland? Well, it looks like we're going to be hunting these Isu shards, which are hidden across the island itself, which we'll then be able to put together to get access to some sort of Isu temple, which is actually hinted as being the main cause of these nightmares because there's some sort of artifact that actually is deep inside this tomb. So the protagonists are going to be working together to actually shut it all down. In fact, there's actually a quest entry that Pella's also found called the Mystery of the Isu and Ibsarp, another game file pioneer, has also found this Isu text inscription. So I think it's definitely a job for Access the Animus and the wider community here. So very much looking forward to seeing this translation. And by the way, we actually go into more speculative depth about what Pedder has found regarding Cassandra in this video. So if you haven't watched it yet and found this interesting so far, it may be worth checking that one out for a little bit more context. Now onto maps. And if you've been with the channel over the last several months, you may know that I love whipping up a very speculative map based on the locations that Pedder has found in the game files and we actually put together a Wrath of the Druids and a Siege of Paris map which actually turned out to be pretty much there give or take and I've actually done the same here for the Isle of Skye. All of these locations Pella has actually found are real locations on the island to this day so even though this won't be to scale you can kind of visually see what's potentially inbound for us here. Quick reminder here though folks this isn't canon nor is it confirmed officially so I've put this together just for a little bit of fun and to kind of add to the conversation so hopefully you'll find it fun and interesting too. So let's start off with the Isle of Skye and where it's based and that is on the west coast of Scotland and it's actually the largest of the major islands in the Northern Hebrides. So if we go ahead and actually focus on the Isle of Skye here this is what we're kind of looking at in terms of a geographical area and I'm also going to highlight the area where I think we're going to be spending the majority of our time which is kind of similar to the Wrath of the Druids in the sense that we won't have access to the whole island but just certain parts and in this case it's going to be the north. Now let's go ahead and zoom in and start off with our first location that Ped has actually found in the game files which is Portree. In fact the quest entry Pedder has actually found states that we need to meet Cassandra in Portree, which is actually the capital town of the island so that kind of makes sense and then we need to travel up the road to Kilter Glen where there's a lovely bed and breakfast in real life according to TripAdvisor and that's also where we're going to meet Cassandra again. Now our third stop is called The Store also known as the Old Man Store to the locals and it's noted as a fast travel point according to Pedder, which also actually makes sense as it's a massive rocky hill and very popular with hikers. We then move on to Bride's Vale Falls which is a very famous waterfall on the island it's very picturesque and then moving further north we come across Brothers Point and Melt Falls which are also more visually awesome cliff locations on the island. Now not far from there is Camp Quiring and it looks like quests are going to be occurring here it's also a very hilly part of the island but even further north than that we actually come across Camp Duntalum which is now a town but originally was actually a Pictus fortress which sounds pretty promising. So let's move south and we've got a town here called Hung Ladder and then we've also got the Cave of Gold which is an actual location in Sky, and it's one of the island's most secret walks. I think this kind of stuff is really cool to see included in the game as the entry states in the game files that we need to open a door to the cave of gold so that's very intriguing. Moving further south though we come across Tobitar which is actually where we're going to be meeting Cassandra again as well as Clad Ark which is a famous Pictus stone where we'll actually find a letter of some sort in game. We then start heading west to the island of Isai which is actually currently uninhabited but south of that we then visit Dunvegan village which is now Dunvegan castle which was actually built in the 13th century and the seat of the ruler of Skye which was Clan 
McLeod. If we head even further west though, we're gonna come across another fast travel point called Nice Point, which is now a modern day lighthouse, which also kind of adds up and makes sense. If we start to look further south though, we'll come across a location called Dunard Trek, which was a Pictish fortress and slightly up the road to the very famous Talisker whiskey distillery, which I will talk about shortly. We've also got the Fairy Pools, which is a very famous international tourist attraction because these are very vivid aqua blue rivers and waterfalls and the legend goes that the chief of clan mcleod married a fairy princess giving rise to many fairy locations named in sky so i reckon we may get some sort of fireflies follow up here because i know scatha has collected over a hundred fireflies in valhalla to date so i've got my fingers crossed for you mate i really hope we get some sort of conclusion here otherwise what is the actual point in having them in game but for our final location we've got the island of Rissay, which is actually the same size as the island of manhattan and very famous for being the birthplace of Sawley McLean, who was an international, very revered Gaelic poet. So all in all, I think this gives us a solid idea on the scope of this map based on the locations that Pedder has found so far. And this has also got me thinking if this is just going to be part of the third Svartalheim DLC as kind of a side quest arc, maybe like Vinland, that's kind of my thinking so far, or perhaps a completely free update before Christmas. So lots to think about here, but the honest and straight up answer is we just don't know until Ubisoft officially announced their plans. But of course, really welcome your thoughts on this down below. Always great to have a chat with you and by the way if you actually have found any value or learned anything new in the video so far a very quick like on the video would be very much appreciated that map took me absolutely ages so thank you very much now let's move on to some weapons and Pedder's actually found reference to the spear of leonidas which if you played odyssey you'll be well up to speed with but if you haven't it's described as once being wielded by king leonidas himself and is said to hold the strength of the 300 and of course it is considered to be a blade of eden so a lot of magical properties there Pedder also says that he's unsure if we're actually going to be able to wield this one and i can't personally see Cassandra giving this up but Jose post-launch producer of Valhalla did tell your Raptor in an interview that we will be picking up a new weapon class which will be similar to Kara's Seeks in the Wrath of Druids so longer daggers but doesn't actually meet that threshold for the one-handed sword so perhaps could this weapon fall into that category and it's another good video from your by the way so on the off chance that you haven't seen it I'll pop the link down below well worth your time but let's talk about the hero's sword which is an iconic sword from Odyssey which was owned by Cassandra or Alexios depending upon who you played with and it's actually noted as a gift from a friend that will never be forgotten which makes sense really because the sword is actually obtained from a quest line after you help Leda so perhaps we now pick up this sword as a gift from Cassandra for helping her in Sky and even though that is a lot of speculation there I think it's all come in full circle in some sort of way. Now drinking has always been at the forefront of a lot of activities in Valhalla and I think instead of beer we're going to be drinking whiskey and for those of you who aren't aware it's a very serious business here in the UK especially in Scotland and in fact Scottish whiskey is arguably the best in the world and you'd kind of expect that to be the case as there is historical credibility of whiskey being invented in Scotland so this makes even more sense because Pedder has actually found reference to a side quest where we'll have to locate and collect ingredients to make the drink of the picks and Abel even says that I will win over all the hearts of Sky with this finally the world will recognize my worth with this smoky drink that's stronger than mead so it looks like a bit of a fun side quest here and it seems that we're going to be involved in inventing whiskey on the Isle of Sky. and so it happens one of the famous distilleries on Sky is actually the internationally renowned Talisker whiskey maker so very awesome detail there and I'm very much looking forward to exploring it more. Now Pedder has actually found more information regarding the third DLC including its suspected name by the way so lots more stuff to speculate on and chat about and if that does interest you it may be worth clicking the notification bell so you can find your way back easily. Also if you haven't already do swing by and say hi in our discord community we've got over 600 awesome people here and it would be cool to see you in the lobby and our thanks go out to Pedder for bringing us this information to talk about and speculate on it's all good fun so very much looking forward to what you find next and i think that'll do for me on this one looking forward to seeing you in the next video but this time coffee and whiskey is on me